Oh, my audio is out of whack. It's a little bit loud, I think. Is that too loud still? Or is that good? I think maybe it's good. The morning after, you hunker down in a janitor's locker room amid the smells of industrial stink, strength cleansers, floor wax, and body odor. Sleep is impossible as you must be constantly on your. Okay, I think we already read that, anyways. Um... Okay, and we already put on our janitor suit. Um. So we need to learn about this dude before we meet with him. Because I'm assuming he is gonna quiz us or some BS. Oh. The supervisor has the look of a stuffer shack manager with delusions that he is on a career track rather than what he is, a disposable dime a dozen resource. Hey, there you there you are. I'm Steve Scott. I'll be your direct supervisor. Sorry I missed you when you first came in, but I only found out you were starting an hour ago when you suddenly showed up in the system. What a weird glitch. Normally, we'd watch an orientation trip and walk through our mission statement, but that's going to be hard for you on your first day. Uh, well, it's going to be hard for you on your first day, but you're going to need to clean up some blood. Maybe a lot of blood. Clean up other people's messes is what I do. Well, you'll have your hands full. There was some sort of break-in last night. Some people were, um, just getting things cleaned up on this floor. And listen, people are going to be on edge today, so try and stay invisible and don't get into any trouble. Otherwise, they're going to call me, and I'm going to have to reprimand you and put a note in your file. Strump before, stab trouble. You got it. I hope they get whoever did this. Only a fool would attack a Telestrian corporate office and think they can get away with it. Start heading from room to room and clean what needs cleaning. Good luck, and welcome to Telestrian. Alright, can I actually clean up, like, all this blood? Is that some Viscera cleanup clue? Cleanup crew? Let's start with this one. What is this? Looks like you could get the access pin off easily, but the telestrian technician could turn around at any moment. Turn around, they're facing me. As the telestrian tech jockey turns to speak, you notice a panel has been removed from one of the land racks just behind them. Hey, thanks for coming. Can you believe it? Silver Star's calling for an intrusion. Uh, calling it an intrusion, but I know the aftermath of a shadow run when I see it. Start over in the corner and make sure you don't get any solvents on my servers. Uh, hey, my dude, do you think you could maybe duck out for a smoke or something? It would be easier if I didn't have to clean around you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry about that, no problem. Just another day in paradise, right? Cool beans. Okay. Easy peasy.
Okay. Just uh, clean it up. Matrix land parts. Interesting. Oh, what is this on the floor? Is that water? I don't remember knocking over a plant. Let's save. Don't blow your cover. Okay. Let's hop in here. The two men are staring into the vent and shaking their heads. Look, Raul. Raul. I don't know what your name is. I know I told you that there's nothing in that vent, but when I told that to Silverstar, he accused me of not wanting to crawl in there. Said, uh, said was letting the company down by not displaying the corporate value of duty. Yeah, these suits sure love their mission statements and all that, Drek, but today isn't the day for Telestrian Corp's duty above all crap. Several of us did the ultimate duty last night. I guess we should just be happy Mr. Telestrian isn't in today. The ultimate duty. Yeah, just just get in there and take another look. I've got to go upstairs and report. The ultimate duty. Oh, okay, there's another panel over here. A filthy guard is looking into an open vent. He's clearly not enjoying the idea of climbing back into the duct. Uh, sorry, I tracked all that dreck all over the floor. Man, I can't believe what happened to the Night Watch. Yeah, me either. You think you're done with the vents for the day? They want me to get this room back in order. Uh, if, if anyone asks, you saw me in there, okay? That's how all Telestrian employees talk, so... Yeah. Yeah, let's talk to this guy. Let's save. How many of these ships that to insert? Three? Um, I don't want to go upstairs yet. Oh uh, yeah, what can I do for you? I need to get upstairs. My supervisor says there's more cleaning to do. The top floors may only be accessed with the express authorization of Eric Silverstar, our VP of security. You can head to the lower floors if your supervisor wants. Okay, better get back to it. So that's where I go when I have all the chips installed. Got it. I have to say, at this point, it's not looking good. I just don't know how it happened. Nonetheless, our records show this terminal was left unsecured in direct contravention of Telestrian corporate policy. You failed in your duty. I know it's duty above all for you security types, but I'm the victim here, I swear. Perhaps when Mr. Silverstar gets his next promotion, that will become a value for you data pushers as well. Right now, it seems your value is clock out early and ignore my responsibilities. Don't go anywhere. I need to make my report to Eric. duty. The wage slave is on edge. He is staring vacantly at his terminal, with his hands to his face and his fingers twitching nervously. Uh, what do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? Yeah, it looks like you're in some real trouble, chummer. Buzz, unless you can clean up a shattered career, leave me alone. 
Uh, I came across some items that might help you out. <laughs> I doubt it. You know, you know the guy who said life isn't fair. He was talking about me. Hmm. You know what? Security is bullying you, but I could make it look like your terminal is tampered with, and no one would be the wiser. You're right. There's no reason I should let security push me around. <laughs> Just do it quick. Okay. Thanks so much. I won't forget this when your review comes up. Yeah, no problem, sir. Just glad I could help. Would you mind clearing out of here for a while? There's a lot of work to do. You bet. Just remember to keep this just between us. Is that the last trip? Yes, it is. Let's um, let's walk around some more. Figure out some of those. Oh, are these posters? No. Okay, I guess I can't go anywhere else. Oh well. Dude, I found all these matrix chips. Found all these chips and some important matrix switch boxes. Is that important? The guard thinks for a moment and activates his comm link. He turns his back on you and has a brief conversation. But then he turns back. Yeah, Mr. Silverstar wants to see you in his office immediately. Um, let's go. The brutish, dog-eat-dog -dog existence of a slum dweller is a far cry from the quiet desperation and existential nothingness of a corporate wage slave. Yet after your time at Telestrian Industries, it's unclear which is more bleak. The elevator rises smoothly, its blanderized music assaulting you once again as you ascend to the executive floor and your goal. So I have learned nothing about this dude. There you are. It seems that some of my best are letting me down, and it's good to see that you're displaying one of the most important of my three values. Uh, duty, right? <laughs> well, yes, that is the first value, and I'm glad more than those outside of security follow it. And from a janitor, no less. No, I'm speaking of my third and final value of vigilance, which seems to be sorely lacking around here. Let's just thank him. Well, rewards and punishments must, must give in where required. Now please start filling out the report on my datapad, and I'm afraid I must ask you to not sit in my chair, given your <laughs> attire. I need to go head downstairs and investigate your findings. I'll be right back. So we need to scout around. Oh, your comm link begins to ring. You pick up. Uh, how, how did he sound before? I don't remember. Uh, so these paintings must be what all those expensive deliveries were. We don't have much time. I'm tracking Silver Star, and he's already stepping off the elevator. I don't think your disguise will hold up much longer. I'll update you on his movements. Hurry, mon ami. Uh, let's get some booze.
Vigilance. It's his favorite one, right? Oh, we have Touch Them in Order. Independence. Unity. Oh, no. So, Duty is the first one. Oh, are they just in order? He has a few guards, a tech worker, and a very nervous wage slave gathered at the boardroom and is beginning to question them. Please tell me they're just in order. Wait, do I not have to push all of them? He has finished interviewing a Matrix tech and is now talking sternly to a pair of guards. Oh, I did them in the wrong order. Um, I didn't even notice these closed. We, we push? Okay, I'm sorry, I, I can't I can't read your your stuff. There were three values, right? So this is Yeah, there aren't five. Okay, so booze. They're safe, there's a large DNA scanner. Put the moist end of the cigar. <laughs> Take it. Great work, mon ami. The time for stealth has passed. It has set off every alarm in the system, but I have unlocked the executive elevator, and your path is clear. Head to the elevator and make your escape. It's GTFO! Um, okay. You can't go in there. Well, I just did. Who's gonna stop me? I like that I don't mind that I have my combat drone with me. Oh. Detective McCluskey stands smirking, surrounded by armed and twitchy Lone Star officers. Good morning, moron. Hmm. What do you want, McCluskey? <laughs> what I want is take you into an alley and come out alone. But there's someone who wants to meet you, and we're going for a little ride. Mr. Telestrian wants to meet you in person. He wants to chat about last night's fun and games. You can come along quietly, or you can meet him in a body bag. Oh. Uh, hello, Koalan. Koalan Optimista is now following. <laughs> Koalan Optimista. Hello. Welcome. Come on, Drek for Brains. Make the wrong choice. Um, yeah, let's get this over. Let's get this over with. Damn, I was hoping I'd be able to bring you in feet first. So we're gonna go meet Telestrian. The estate. From the floor of the Lone Star Cruiser, you watch the tops of the downtown corridor's office buildings disappear, replaced by the gray overcast of the, over the 190 bridge. Sorry, I-90 bridge. The nylon restraints binding your wrists and ankles, along with McCluskey's whistling to the radio, make for an unpleasant ride. 
A half hour later, the cruiser hits a whisper-smooth patch of road, and a magnificent mansion fills your view. It's designed a blend of old-world finery and elvish grace. The car pulls to an abrupt halt, and you're dragged onto the driveway where McCluskey pulls a nasty-looking knife and cuts your bonds. You look up to see you're surrounded by a squad of green-clad ghosts, special forces troops from Tier Terranjar. <laughs> Mas massaging the feeling back into your numb extremities, you prepare to meet the man himself, James Telestrian III. Alright, let's not talk to McCluskey again. Actually, will they let me explore over here? No. <laughs> Want some advice, moron? Of course you don't. You're a shadow runner and you live by your own rules, don't you? I suggest you keep your smart ass remor remarks to yourself this time, elf. Mr. Thestrian isn't some street meat you can impress or intimidate. He's the brains behind the throne of that place, and one of the richest men in Seattle. Um. Should I be impressed? <laughs> No, you go ahead in there and keep talking trash. That should work out fine for you, Drek for Brains. You got no money, and you got no power. So what do you got? Oh, do we say indigestion? Oh, hello, Ace. Mr. Tree. Uh, thanks. Um. Do we have honor or indigestion? I got it. I get, I get it. But Ace, tell me, do we have honor or indigestion? Indigestion, got it. You're dumber than I thought. Enjoy your chat. I'll dispose of your body later. Well, McCluskey wasn't fond of that, but... Ooh, this is a fancy-looking house. They have, like, just a random arch with, like, vines on it. The fussy elf, elf with the air of Victorian butler, studies you from your toes to the tips of your pointed ears before he speaks. Mm, Mr. Telestrian is expecting you, sir. You'll find him in his office. This is... Wow, what a mansion! May I look around before I see him? You may wait here for a few minutes to gather yourself before you enter Mr. Telestrian's office. Some people find that they need time to prepare themselves before meeting an elf of his stature. However, the upstairs is strictly off-limits to you, and the library is occupied at the moment. Don't tarry. Mr. Telestrian's not one to be kept waiting long. Uh, okay. Scout the place. Who's... Oh, it's Algernon. I didn't know he was hanging out here. Yeah, let's talk to him. There's a twinkle in Algernon's eye that wasn't there when you spoke it to him at the Seamstress's Union. It's good to see you. There is much to do. What the hell are you doing here? I'm doing what I do, Baconator. Providing those in need with the tools they require. Seek me out after you've spoken to James Telestrian. Perhaps I can be of service again. Okay. So we can't go upstairs. It's strictly verboten. And this is, I'm assuming, where the library would be. Let's save. Let's see what happens if we go upstairs. Probably a bad idea. Look at that weird painting, though. I guess they have COVID in this time period as well. Oh, it won't even let me go upstairs. 
Darn it. I can't break the rules. Okay, I guess we're just going in. Okay. So he likes some music. It's a really fancy couch. Okay, I don't think we can really learn much from there. As you approach, James Celestrian III looks up from the computer screen built onto the surface of his desk and assesses you. Calculating and cold, a practiced smile comes to his face. He vibes the kind of rich you don't get from Trivid. Trivid? Trivid? I don't know. Trividio. It's not the clothing or the trappings of the bow before your betters mansion. It's something else. The feeling that you're being categorized as a resource or a liability or a pawn. It's a weird looking elf. I've been reviewing the results of your vision visit to my Seattle office last night. I admit, they are impressive. You've generated a considerable amount of damage to my office complex, killed or wounded many of my security personnel, and cost my vice president of security his job. In 24 hours, you've accumulated quite a bill with me, sir. How do you intend to settle your debt? Hmm. Um. Okay, let's not be a smartass. Let's take McCleskey's advice. You already confiscated the container I took. I have no other bargaining chips. First, some instruction. You do not begin a negotiation by admitting that you have nothing with which to negotiate. However, you were considering your tactical situation. That tells me you are more than a mere street thug. Allow me to instruct you further. You have one piece of information which you might use as a bargaining chip in the little time you have left to live. Why you took what you took. I'm interested to know why you and your team of criminals fought your way through my security teams up to my private office to access the Matrix and uncover the location of a simple research project. Oh, I could re reveal that I know that Sam Watts is related. But would he would he be upset that I know that secret? And also, when I find the killer I get paid, just makes it seem like I'm doing this for money. Uh, the top one, I don't want to just pretend to be a, a stupid thief. So I could just say that I took the Aegis to kill the bugs. Uh, I really want to... I just wish this last sentence was not in the second response. Yeah, I took the Aegis sample to kill giant insect spirits. <laughs> I find your bluntness somehow refreshing. He touches a button on the desk. Mr. Quoth, please ask my daughter to join us. The young, pretty elf has dark circles under her eyes and a haunted expression on her face. She recognizes you instantly. It's you! But you're the man who helped me escape from the Universal Brotherhood. How'd you get here? Thank you, Marie Louise. You've confirmed the identity of your rescuer and given me reason to forgive him for his trespasses against me. She looks hungry for your help. I'm I'm glad you're here. Guess he got out okay, Marie. I'm not okay. I can't sleep at all. I'm afraid that this is a dream. And I'll wake up there and still be there with bugs. 
You can relax, Marie Louise. You are safe. It is over. No, it won't be over. Not until they're all dead. <sighs> you didn't see them. You don't understand. You and those men you flew in here. All you do is talk. It's just like you to form a committee, father. I knew that someone had to take action. That's why I got Harkeem involved. Who's Harkeem? The already cold exterior of James Telestrian III turns to ice. I see. I was you and your crippled little friend. Oh, it was you. <laughs> it was you and your crippled little friend who leaked Aegis to this man. We will speak of it later, in private. Now then, Baconator, there are people I wish you to meet. The committee my dart daughter alluded to. This is a rare opportunity for a man of the streets such as yourself. I urge you to behave. We will adjourn to the library. Uh, I'd be delighted. I don't know if that is sarcasm or not. Just behave. Okay. Algernon, who the heck is this dude? It's like a jester. Okay, we have Red Elf, um, Jester Elf, White Hair, probably Elf, but maybe not. We can't see his ears. But look at those eyebrows. He has some really big, bushy eyebrows. And two uh, yellow guards. I'm guessing that they're supposed to be clad in green, though. Lady and gentlemen, this is Baconator. He is the elf who saved my daughter, and the only one who has faced our common enemy in combat. Herr Brockhaus, what does the representative of the great dragon, Lofweir, have to say about the magical insect, this Shadowrunner, uncovered? Brockhaus. Speak slowly with a deep, melodious German accent. He takes his time. Accentuate. I will not be doing any sort of a German accent, by the way. Relishing each vowel and each consonant, tasting them as if they were a delicacy. How does this guy sound? My lord, Lofier has witnessed the insect spirit's physical manifestation before, roughly 9,000 years ago. As you are aware, magic ebbs and flows from the earth, cycling from peak to peak over the course of 5,200 years, as the level of magic grows. Hans, dear, I love you, but you could babble on forever, and I believe time is of the essence. Baconator, is it delighted the bug you fought was not merely a magically awakened animal like a wyvern or hydra, or anything else in the sixth world. In fact, it isn't from this world at all. It is the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. Yeah. Go nerd mode. Mm, yes, I believe that would explain why I wasn't able to damage it. The spirit itself is extra planar. Adrenon eyes you keenly. Bravo, that is precisely the idea. The insect spirit exists on both planes simultaneously. I have been impressed with you for some time, Baconator. It is good that you are here. Now, an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through astral space and show up on Earth late for dinner. Dinner, in this case, being us. Two elements are required to bring one across the void. A shaman and a host. First, the spirit calls upon a shaman, often in dreams. The spirit seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accepts the spirit as his totem. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. The best candidates are the disaffected and their disenfranchised. In short, the weak-willed. Their minds are the most susceptible to suggestion, which is helpful in making the transformation. As you may imagine, these are the sorts of people easily attracted to a cult, such as the Universal Brotherhood. 
Finally, by performing what has to be a truly disgusting ritual, the shaman serving the insect totem implants the spirit into the host, willingly or not. And then, <laughs> it's feeding time. How is this guy supposed to be s talking? Is that Harley Quinn? Is that Harley Quinn? I don't know, man. That's a weird way to write it. Harley Quinn is correct. The insect spirit will then slowly consume its host while transforming it into the spirit's own insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plane. I don't like the sound of this. You shouldn't. It's bad. Really, really bad. The initial bugs prepare a nest for the summoning of a queen. Once a nest has its queen, she literally explodes with newly manifested insect spirits. They swarm out of the nest, feasting on all the flesh they can find, and implanting more insect spirits into the fresh corpses. Again, and again, and again. The room falls silent as they all consider the scenario. Faces grim. Telestrian breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, Baconator. It's an invasion. <laughs> My lord Lofir knew this day would come, but he did not know precisely when nor where. Your rescue of Mr. Telestrian's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in this cycle of the world. Well, yeah, that's what the actual name is. I was talking, I'm not talking about what Harlequin's actual name is. Just the weird way that he pronounced it because that's not what the name is spelled the name is spelled like harlequin not har apostrophe leah apostrophe quinn his name is har or her his his name is harlequin like spelled correctly that's his actual name Or at least that's the name that it puts at the top here. Probably not, but I don't think Har apostrophe Lee apostrophe Quinn is either. So his alias is his name but spelled wrong with apostrophes thrown in? Or maybe, maybe that is his real name. It's just a really stupid name. Like, his parents named him that as, like, a pun for Harle Harlequin. So he just goes by Harlequin. That doesn't make sense. That's not much of an alias. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh... Okay, so we are super early to the party. We know what they're planning. That should give us the upper hand, right? We are not early. We merely have experience on our side. The insect spirit is only a resident in the transformed host's body. Conventional weapons can hurt the body and expose the spirit, but the spirit itself cannot be destroyed by mundane means. Hence, Project Aegis. But you're proposing that they didn't name them Harlequin Ace. You're proposing they named them Har apostrophe Lee apostrophe Quinn. <laughs> then which are you saying is their real name? Or neither of those things? I assumed that the weird way in Hans's dialogue that it was spelled was to somehow accentuate how he is like lingering on each syllable but it looks really weird I'm not exactly sure how he's supposed to be pronouncing it okay but what does it have to do with the weird horror apostrophe thing which is what we're talking about that's what I'm trying to figure out 
I agree that the real name is probably not Harlequin, but it has nothing to do with anything. Maybe, maybe it is. But other words don't have that weird thing, so I don't know. Our Telestrian's biotechnology and agricultural divisions worked with my lord Lofweir's thaumaturgical engineers and designed Project Aegis to destroy an insect spirit once it is released from the host. The formula for arresting astral bacteria strain exists in the physical and astral plane at once and can thus affect the insect's spirit. Now that was a mouthful. Did you memorize it or are you reading it off index cards? Sure, we can go with that, Ace. I, I don't know. Maybe. You should have said his full name like an angry mother. My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how Project Aegis will be used in the field. Dr. Ravenwood. Oh, she's not red. She looks very red in the, uh, the actual 3D model. Our weapons specialists have rapidly prototyped a delivery device for the fluorescing astral bacteria strain. They've created some prototype launchers from which Aegis filled shells when fired. The shells will discharge a high velocity stream of the bacteria. In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must first be damaged using conventional weapons or magic until the spirit is released from the host body. Then an insect spirit must be shot with the Project Aegis prototype launcher to destroy it. It's multi-dimensional bug spray. Crudely put, but accurate, we must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning a queen, and we must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside their facility, and the only one who has personally fought these creatures before. That, along with your highly effective assault upon my property, indicates that you are the ideal person to lead the attack. What makes you think Project Aegis will work? Because it has to. Come on, kid. When fate taps you on the shoulder, you've got to pay attention. Unfortunately, she has the nasty habit of tapping you on the opposite shoulder, so that when you turn around, she's on your other side, giggling like a deranged schoolgirl. I hate that. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission, Baconator? Yeah, let's do it. You had me killing bugs. Show me how to use the Aegis, and I'll get it done. Excellent. I love the way that the short-lived are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. I'm not short-lived. There is one final note. A warning, if you will. You have seen the danger the insects represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. The shaman must tap into a powerful source of magic in order to summon a queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Beware of the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. Hey, don't scare the quid, Hansel. We need him to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, Baconator. I wouldn't mind seeing these creatures for myself. I missed him last time. Telestrian will bankroll you so you can hire the rest of the team. Find me when you're ready to go and we'll bug right out of here. Yes, speak with Harlequin when you're ready to depart. If you wish to acquire additional supplies for your mission, find my assistant, Quoth. He is highly resourceful. Sweet. What's Algernon got to say? Uh, no, I don't like any of those things. We did not allow many opportunities during our briefing 
briefing for you to ask questions, Shadowrunner. You may ask them now. Yeah, if, if Lofir had seen this coming before and knew another was coming, why didn't he move faster? Based upon the previous cycles of magic, the first insects are not due to appear for another 700 years. My lord Lofweir believed he was well ahead of schedule. Something is different this time. It is concerning. What do you think is different? Perhaps it is due to the population of humans and metahumans on Earth being so much higher than in previous ages. As a result, the volume of magic created by sentient beings is correspondingly higher. Or perhaps it is the density of the population, coupled with the advances of society and technology, that has altered things. Magic has never returned to a world like this one before. The density of sentient creatures, coupled with the density of information, coupled with the new concept, the technological persistence of memory, heightens a society's existential angst. Thus, thus more people realize how truly horrible existence is simultaneously. That in itself may be a form of magic. Lofweir is studying the question now. Where do the bugs come from? As the level of magic in the sixth world grows, the, for lack of a better word, the distance between the various planes of reality decreases. When the membrane between the planes is thin enough, ritual magic may be used to draw beings from one to another. Yeah, I should go. Yes, good luck. Let's find Quoth. What's up, dude? Oh. Let's talk to Marie again. Uh, show me the outfits. Nope, we're keeping our current outfit. Drones. We already have Class S drones. Sweet. Hand forged katana. Dragon sword. I could bring gun, but then I'd have to leave one of my drones or my deck behind. And you never know when those things will come in handy. Um. What do you mean? I'm looking at his weapons. Why wouldn't there be guns? What else would you want to fight with? There are lots of different guns in the real world too, you know. You realize there are like hundreds of times more different types of gun in reality. Get some grenades. Oh, we have a lot of money. Maybe I will buy a gun. We can't really use any of the, the big ones, though. We're not skilled enough. Oh, we can use this thing, though. No, you don't want to fight with a stick. It would be better than nunchucks, though. Get another med kit, another drone repair, and one of these. Uh, so, sure, we won't bring our deck, though it does make me sad. We'll bring another med kit, and we'll bring uh, this thing. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, 
Ultra Stick. Yes, the Ultra Stick 9000. Plus two armor, that sounds useful. Um, we could get a cyber leg. Oh, I should save. I don't know how much of uh, my money I should be spending. Are we going to stuff like hire a team? Let's go check. I don't want to leave yet, but let's see if it's going to cost us money to hire a team. <coughs> oh, I'm going to have to bring this weapon. Oh, I don't get to pick a team like your oh I do okay so thank you okay so this guy will have more aegis if I bring a ghost so I want to bring this dude I have to bring Harlequin and that leaves one other person so it'll cost me a thousand and then well, no one else is going to have Aegis. That's a shame. Mandibu. I could bring Mandibu. Johnny Boy. Oh, I could bring Hermes so I can get, um, haste. What's Harlequin equipped with? Sword. Okay, Harlequin is a physical adept and mage. Uh, so yeah, we'll bring Hermes and a ghost. So I need to make sure that I have, um, let's just say 4,000 left. Let's spend um, 10k. This dermal plating sounds fantastic. Oh, but so did this leg up here. Put one in each. Hey, that's pretty good. Sure, and we get like a basic eyeball. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, don't care at all about losing essence. Cool. Now I have amazing legs. Ready to go. Bring this dude and Herms. Seems like an okay team. Let's do it. 
the hunt begins. Your return to the Universal Brotherhood is anything but subtle. The team hits the same back door Coyote found, and you storm through, quickly making your way into the restricted area in the room where you last met Jessica, and first encountered the bug. You stand there together, listening to the sounds of chittering coming from the somewhere distant. Harlequin stares into the darkness, humming tunelessly while fingering the sword on his hip. Then he turns, lift his, lifts his Aegis launcher to his lips, and gives it a kiss. You give the signal, and the hunt begins. Uh, yeah, we're good with equipment. Can't believe I wasted money buying a brand new gun. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's a lot of karma. Oh, I can't select these because... Okay, I can't have more than my intelligence. So if I want my drones to be really freaking awesome, can I do that? Oh, I have to max out all of these, so there's no way that I can get it. It's just not possible. So let's not bother. Well, that's a shame. How about quickness? Can I get anything cool with quickness? Yeah, okay, let's increase our body, our quickness. Arranged combat. What is this? Okay. Yeah, that's good. We'll go with this. Oh, actually. There. We'll give ourselves one point of spirit summoning, because why not? That side door you found last time you were here was helpful. We avoided all those Universal Brotherhood spa cult yahoos. Celestrin was right. You're a real value add. <laughs> now the fun begins. I'm ready. Let's do it. to our buddy. Oh, quick strike is zero AP to you. want to use the launcher. Let's just sword this dude. Oh. 
also on damage. Okay, I can't make it there, so... Or E just gone. Go downstairs now. <coughs> oh, I can't quite make it. Oh, I should have healed this dude first. Oh well. This will be bugs now. Right? No? Why is my main character not getting an action on the first round? Elevated one. Glory to the elevated. Sixty-nine. Um. I need to cast haste again. Run away! 
Well, that's a shame. Go scout with the wolf hound. Chairs. There's their first bug. I think these might have attack of uh, area attacks. That's a lot of damage. myself. We're picking it back here, just not doing anything. Uh, so let's see. 
launcher time. Oh no. How about you, buddy? Bug is dead. Reload. No, you could overwatch with a melee weapon. Oh. I'm slowly making my way to you guys. Yes, Chicago was his priority. Oh, there's another bug. Okay. 
That's fine, that's fine. Ghost, you have to take out this dude by yourself. No, you're a failure. It's all friends within range. Okay, maybe she can take it out. Nope. I go after that crap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, can I haste again? Yes. Really? You've gotta be kidding me. No. That again. Get one of one on each side there. We'll found. Go off. Um, who needs the most healing? No one really. Come on. A 
pile of broken bodies, the bones look twisted, and their jaws hang open, seemingly in terror. Okay, let's, uh, all pile in. Oh, okay, I can summon a creature. Taste him again. He's definitely the MVP of this. Really enjoying Harlequin. Um, okay, two gunners. Both gunners, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, of course, they both have Overwatch. Quite dead. Heal thyself. That's where I don't see another rat. get in this room. I don't know where to go. Can I heal next turn? Oh, 
Aha. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh no. Already. Um, crap. Baconator is your drones. I don't know what I just do. I'm an idiot. I turned off my drone so I'm on. Okay, sweet. So we have to get in position to take this dude out as soon as it rises. Oh, oh man. Okay, I can heal myself. Oh, I can't heal myself. So I'll heal him. Let's save. One down. At least two to go. Reload. Reload. Okay, Baconary, you can actually do something. How about that? What a big help, Baconator. Oh, that was a big help. Where did that other guy go?
Is it just hiding in there? Of course he is. Oh, why can't I heal myself? Oh, it only heals damage from the most recent attack. Okay. So you can't use it multiple times on yourself, basically. I wish we had a crappier medkit to use. Let's just keep trucking. Let's bait the true form where we're out. Oh. Oh, was it going all the way around? Bacon Nitter might be in danger. Okay, no, it's coming back. Like crappy med kits. Um. <clears throat> I think we should wait for it to come out further. Acid stream sounds pretty cool. Confusion sounds really cool, but I don't think it'll work on this. Can we blind it? Okay, awesome. Kick in. Please haste, my boy. Okay, one more hit should kill it, right? Go ahead and use a med kit. Maybe it's a waste, I don't know.
Let's just turn this one off. Vanish. Into the depths, the cold utilitarian facilities of the Brotherhood's private areas break away and degenerate into sprawling subterranean tunnels. <coughs> tunnels that were not crafted by the hands of man. The air is foul with the smell of decaying flesh and something else. A rank, stinging acid bite that hits noses and eyes hard. Wet, squirming noises echo throughout the tunnels, punctuated by low moans and the occasional gasp. For what? You can't tell. One other thing you can tell, though. The Aegis works. You shoulder your launcher and keep going. <sighs> we continue on down into the belly of the beast. You enjoying this? This, slumming with shadow runners and killing insect spirits with insecticide spewing guns? What's not to enjoy? Onward. Alrighty. Interesting. Okay, there's a vent I can send a drone through. here and turn on both of our boys. thing that happens now, we'll just have these guys popping out of every nook and cranny. Okay, so I can't actually be too far away from that corpse, otherwise I won't be able to take it down when it rises. You sir, move here. Can't debuff him. Slow. Oh no, that doesn't lower AP. Huh. Uh, I could summon a totem. Let's well, not. Wow. 
Ow. You unload into it. Turn Baconator. Amazing. One down. Really, how do you miss? Why did it path find through there? <sighs> okay, hopefully that'll be enough. Pretty good about that. Let's repair one of our drones. Can we not? No, we aren't close enough. So 
some kind of a another probably pop out of there or something. Is my guess. Wait, this is... it doesn't go any deeper? What a waste. Okay, I can't hiss again, so let's just go. Oh. Wasn't this lovely? Kamikaze. Oh no, the vent did exit. Oh well. through here. I can exit here, right? Yeah, okay. Right? I don't understand. I think it's bugged and I actually can. Oh well. as a man.
Run, Baconator, run! Okay, can you please haste? Drone in the way? Oh, it just doesn't have enough movement. Alright. everyone topped off with healing. Another gets gonna uh, come out too? Just the one? No, okay, two. Okay, it could have been three, so not that bad. Never mind, it is three. A worker, a bombardier, and a uh, venom. back here, please. Oh, that was easy. Okay, 
Okay, we need him on this side. Distract this guy, please. Wait, where did it where did that thing go? Can it only attack things that she can see? Okay, so how are we doing here? Line of sight block. That's BS. Mark target. I have to do it from here. <sighs> Kidding me. We didn't do it. We didn't kill this one. Okay. We got a chance on that one.
Can she haste? No. Kill one of these stupid things. Can you please cast haste on someone? I'm sure, on air. Thank goodness. That was just the worker left. Oh, that worker's weird looking. I didn't realize that this one was like semi humanoid. Oh, it isn't. It's only. Oh, that's even weirder. So the front is bug and it has like a human on its back. Remember, he has grenades. I'll stand on the bridge. That sounds like a wonderful idea. What could go wrong?
Those can be healed. You can be healed. Oh, nice. Wagon trauma kit. Okay, nice. Get some of this stuff. A grenade. Decking five. Obtain decking five. Wait, did we not do it? Okay, there we go. Take it. Nice. <sighs> this is gonna be like the big final battle. 
It does feel like it when you have like a room full of supplies right before the checkpoint. I should have healed her. The bug shaman. A rhythmic thrumming punctuates the air, passing through you, vibrating your lungs and your chest, and making it hard to breathe. It's an electricity that makes the hair on your skin stand up in protest. Ahead, you hear the sounds of chanting, ac accented by the moist wriggling of larva. There are low rumbles, too, stone on stone. The sense of imminence is everywhere. Something is coming, and it has to be stopped. Alrighty. Um, so can I go ahead and use a med kit on her right now? She's missing 30 hit points. healed very, very little. No one has like, oh, how'd you get another one of these? No one has like crappy med kits. Jessica. Oh no. Jessica appears to be in the throes of a violent trance or mild seizure, a manic state brought on by the terrible energy she is attempting to conduct. Baconator, stop! The queen approaches, the vessel, the summoning. We cannot be disturbed. Your vessel's gone. This is over, Jessica. Jessica's eyes roll back in her head. Whatever magic she is channeling is fast approaching a crescendo. Lynn speaks in her place. You may have taken Marie Louise, our chosen, but another Telestrian will take her place. I give myself willingly to be our host, or er, to be host to our queen and the mother of a new world. You've seen what these things do, Lin. This queen will devour you, body and soul. And then crap out a few billion young. Blech. No, I will become a perfect being. Through me and through my sacrifice, a new age will begin. When Jessica speaks next, her eyes have a disturbing sharpness. Her words are echoed by Lin in a manner that suggests a connection beyond their shared zealotry. The hive has no thought beyond hunger, no goal beyond reproduction. We are one. Sam had a hunger too, didn't he, Jessica? What? You said it yourself, Sam had appetites. All that mattered to him was his next fix. Vile appetites! Appetites he couldn't control, and he died for them. Because I willed it. Yes, but why? There's more to it than just your mother. The hum of magical energy permeating the room seems quiet. She's listening. You came under the thrall of these creatures long before you knew of your mother's death. The Brotherhood, they, they were a family to me. Yes, and they had already freed you from your old life, so why come back? Why kill Sam? I... I had to, for what he did, what he had become. You said Sam represented a sickness in the world, but I think he represented the sickness in you. 
You're trying to confuse me. You saw a wrongness in yourself, and you projected it onto Sam. No, I... He... He was your brother, Jessica. Your twin. Don't you see? I... I I'm sorry. But there's no turning back. I cannot undo what's been done, and I can't stop what's to come. The queen is near! Uh, insect pillar. Crap, do we go for the insect pillar, or Jessica, or Lynn? What are these uh, symbols? What are you do there? It's sleeping. Sure. Oh, there's another pillar. Okay, it's a mirror. Oh, do I need to Aegis it? Take out Jessica first. I think we need to focus on just taking out Jessica. Keep eyes on her. We're not doing much damage to her. There's just has a lot of health, I guess. Asleep. Guardian. Huh. 
That one's asleep. This one's asleep. That's asleep. And what about this one? You go investigate. I don't look away. Okay. Just had to be sure. That's a lot of hit points. Maybe we do just need to start taking out bugs. Yeah, we have to kill bugs. Uh, Baconator, you have a gun. Why does this look active when it's sleeping? going to walk through this like a dummy though if I do that. Can I body block it? Ah, 
on. Oh well. Don't escape, please. Do I just need to take out Jessica? That's the real question. You've ruined everything! Oh. Okay, we stopped the ceremony. Now we just need to kill all the bugs, I guess. Yeah, there's no way we'll be taking that guy out, so... Focus on this soldier. This guy had a lot of health. I'm still immune.
chance at miss. Did it twice more. Damn. It's all on you, dude. What are we still doing? Okay. We did it. The once beautiful Jessica Watts is a hollow shell of her former self. Her skin is pale, her lips are ashen, and her eyes are sunken in her skull. It's more than her body's reaction to the physical damage she has sustained or the strain of channeling magical power from another plane of existence. There's something missing from her now. It's gone. My link to the, the queen. She's abandoned me, expelled me. Unworthy, unworthy. There's still hope for you, Jessica. I wish that were true, but there's no hope for me now. There's no hope for anyone. There's a nest like this in every major city. There's no stopping them. Oh God. And Sam, I'm so sorry, Sam. Inside the fate of Sam Watts' killer. Please, Baconator, don't let them, don't let them eat me. So I can watch the bugs eat her. I can kill her first. Yeah, let's take her in. You're coming with me. I understand. Okay, we must protect her. Do we get to fight the bugs? No? No, out of the shadows, you emerge from the Universal Brotherhood Chapter House, momentarily blinded by the bright lights of the Lone Star perimeter surrounding the exit. Despite the clean night air, the stench of ichor and decay clings to you, a smell that may never fully go away. You drop your Aegis-filled shotgun, and it's quickly speared away by one of Telestrian's minions. Weapons are slowly lowered as you step out onto the street, the order coming from Detective McCluskey himself. You can see James Telestrian just nearby, pulling his strings. It's over. Jessica Watts has been dealt with, and Sam has his justice. The dead man's deed is done. All you need now is to make a phone call, and it ends. How would the dead man switch, like, know that we actually did complete it? Like, couldn't we have just phoned in to whatever automated system and, like, your dog, we did it. Give me, give me the money, like without doing anything. And after we broke up the ritual, Baconator chased Jessica into a small chamber where she was cornered by a couple of buggers. Guess they weren't impressed with her performance. They were about to eat her. 
And... And Baconator says something like, I won't let them eat you, Jessica. You're coming with me. You're going to pay for what you've done. It was very dramatic. Then we splattered the bugs and handed her over to the UCAS FBI. They're going to want to have a long talk with her about the Universal Brotherhood. So this nest is cleaned out, and your cousin Lynn is being transported to a mental hospital for observation. Very clean. I believe our test of Project Aegis was a success. Herr Brockhaus uh, is having it weaponized now for distribution to Knight Errant forces. The authorities are going to have a great many questions about this incident, and I will need to provide details. The Universal Brotherhood has a great many chapter houses, and they must be dealt with immediately. Uh, well, what next? That's for others to determine. People other than you. Still, you have turned in a... Humans? I've only ever read that word. I've never heard it actually spoken. Uh, yeah, uh, that person's effort. And regardless of your obvious flaws, you are deserving of a reward. What would you ask of me? Do we want to work for the corpse? Do we want to just fire McCluskey because we're spiteful? Or just money? Um, I think we would want to continue probably hunting down these bugs and saving the world or whatever, but I don't think that would be best done as the VP of security at Telestrian. I'm not a spiteful person, so let's, let's just get money. I would expect no less from you, Mr. Quoth. Please place a suitable bonus on our friend's cred stick. A bonus of such size that additional negotiations are unnecessary. I have no interest in furthering our relationship. Yes, sir. Ooh, that's a lot of million. Looks like you two are best buddies now. Sweet. Uh, well, we did it. Let's just talk to everyone, I guess. Sorry we didn't bring you, Coyote. Guess that's it, huh? You captured Sam's killer, and now he'll get his justice. Guess so. Tough week, huh? Gangers, hellhounds, amok mental patients, serial killers, ghouls, corporate deckers, extra-dimensional bugs, and an army of corpse security. I could use a nap. I bet. Well, I'm gonna go grab Paco, head back to the Union. Maybe watch a trit or something. I could use a long shower, too. After that... You could learn the business, take over from Miss Kaboto. That's a good idea. Someday, maybe, when the rest of my body is made of metal, too. But not today. Today I run the shadows. Get paid, get dirty. See you around, Baconator. You're quite, quite a guy. I can honestly say, I've never met an elf quite like you. Why do you gotta bring my race into it? The painted elf is watching the scene unfolding around the Universal Brotherhood with a grimace. Well, kid, it's been fun, but I've seen everything I care to see today. I'm gonna get out of here. Who are you? A friend. Until I need you for something, then I'm a bastard. Uh, we'll see you around. What are you looking at, Tube? I don't really want to do any of these. So yeah, nothing, just some asshole. I heard the Universal Brotherhood was getting shot up on the police scanner. Knew it had to be you. Did you get her? She's in custody. Ah, justice is served. Guess that concludes the story of Baconator and the Dead Man's Switch, huh? 
You know, I've been thinking, maybe you should stay in Seattle a while. There's plenty of ways folks like us can get into trouble here. You only skim the surface. I heard Mitsuhama's looking for a, a team, and they specifically want elves. No idea what it's about. I just got word that something's going on at Crater Lake. The tears got it on total lockdown, no fly zone, the whole thing. There could be something in it for us if we poke around. And there's always the orc underground. Haven't seen that yet, have you? I got plenty of friends there who are good for a job. Something's bound to come up. What do you say? Yeah, I'll think about it. You do that. If you want to find me, I'll be at McCracken's later. Got a taste for some seafood. Take it easy, chummer. What about you, Doc? Hey, Baconator, I was wondering if I was going to see you again. I guess I shouldn't be surprised to find you here. Just making more work for you. Thanks, but I prefer natural causes. You know, it's all over the Trivid, right? They found the Emerald City Ripper dead at some asylum out in Snohomish, of all places. Turns out he'd been masquerading as the head administrator or something. They found him dead from some sort of vigilante attack. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Why, Mr. Dresden, I have no idea what you mean. That's what I thought. Well, no one can say he didn't have it coming, am I right? That was a double negative. So, the big question, what about the dead man's switch? Now that the Ripper's dead, are you going to collect? Yeah, I almost forgot about it. Forgot? Come on, how do you collect? I was told I need a secure line to call the number Sam gave me. Can't use my comm link. Hmm. Lone Star's emergency response team set up a secure phone line right here to coordinate their efforts. I can authorize you to use it. Thanks. Don't mention it. Take care, Baconator. The phone before you has a simple numerical keypad. You can use it to call Sam's law firm and cash in on the dead man's switch. You tap in the phone number Sam's lawyer gave you days ago. The phone rings seven times before someone finally answers. The image of the lawyer on the other end of the vid phone is noticeably different from the one you saw a few days ago. The noise in the background sounds like it's coming from a bar. Yeah? He squints from the phone and recognition slowly appears on his face. Oh hey, it's you, Baconator, right? So you got Sam's killer, huh? Yeah, I got Sam's killer. That's, that's great. Hang on, let me slot Sam's video for you. He fumbles for a moment and the camera jerks crazily. Then it goes to static and is replaced by Sam. Good old Sam. Sam still looks like Drek. Same clothes, same background, probably shot at the same time as the first video. Hey, buddy, looking good, looking good, he giggles. If you're calling this number, that means the job is done, right? Congratulations, amigo. I knew you'd do it. You were always the dependable one. More than me, anyway. I I just want to say thank you for whatever you did. It means a lot. Not even knowing what you did, it still means a lot. Because I know you did something. You know what I mean? I know you made it right. Somehow. You're the only one. The only one who ever gave me... Uh, who tried to help me, ever. Except my sister. She tried. More than once, she tried. I never let her, though. Never let her in. I regret that. A lot. Did I ever tell you about her, buddy? We're twins. We're twins, I guess. You still a twin after one of you dies? I don't know. Doesn't matter, I guess. <sighs> God, listen, do me a favor, will ya? If you talk to her, her name's Jessica. Tell her I'm sorry, okay? For everything. She'll know what for. She's Catholic, so she'll forgive me. <laughs> I... I need her to forgive me. Just tell her I love her. 
Anyway, you need to get paid. Which would be great, except for one thing. I got nothing. Never did. You know how it is, right? Sorry, but hey, thanks again for giving a crap. Seriously, I appreciate it. Tell you what, I feel sore about if you feel sore about it, look into my family background a bit. There's gotta be people with money in there somewhere. Maybe one of them can throw you a few bucks. Take care, amigo. See you in hell. He reaches forward and shuts off the camera. The vid screen goes to static, and the call ends. There's a moan of silence, and then you feel a tug on your jacket. It's Dresden. So, what did he say? Thank you. He just said thank you. Awesome. We did it! The Emerald City Ripper killings are sensationalized for several weeks. Lurid reports focus on the killer masquerading as the administrator of Mercy Mental Hospital. Soon after, pop singer Maria Mercurial is cast as the lead in Dr. Ripper, a trivid thriller about a reporter who goes undercover as a mental patient to uncover a serial killer. Seattle Newsnet reports a shootout at the chapter house of the Universal Brotherhood. Witnesses claim that a gang of religious fanatics stormed the building for unknown reasons, but committed suicide before they could be captured. All mention of insect spirits, James Celestrian III, or Shadowrunners are kept out of the news. One year later, the city of Chicago declares a quarantine area between Lake Michigan and the Des Plaines River. Officially, the Chicago Containment Zone is established to find an outbreak of an infectious virus, but an infestation of insect spirits is suspected by those who know. A mature form of Project Aegis called FABS-3 is eventually deployed to remove the bug threat from Chicago. The Watts family name has since been lost to the shadows. Awesome! Heck yeah! Whew. Wow. We did it. Uh, I don't know if I want to immediately start the next one or not. What should we do now? I guess I could always end the stream early, but I would have to install the I'd have to install um, Dragonfall. I'll do that. Next week I'll play Dragonfall. It'll be fine. Uh, I'm just going to, I guess, leave a little bit early, get some lunch a little bit early. Oh, here are my glasses. They've been sitting next to me for a while. Uh, well, later. Thanks for tuning in and hanging with me. If you're still there, Ace, thanks. <laughs>